All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, here to showcase the number one meta power forward build in NBA 2K22 Next Gen for Comp Pro Am, also known as the backside defender. It's going to be your hedge defender as well as just kind of a corner spot up. And we all know what a power forward does at this point. So, as a lot of you guys know, the meta build is the six foot nine glitch metric to play at the four. Sometimes people like to play it at the three, though. You could even run two of these at the three and the four. So just keep that in mind. But again. We're here to showcase the meta power forward build. Now, I don't think it's my favorite, to be honest with you. I've already showcased to you guys in a couple videos back where we're going to start running at our power forward position with Tonic. 7-2 glitch metric with small wingspan. But again, we're here to showcase in all these videos the best and the meta build that everybody uses for a reason as well. So we're going to get straight into this. I hope you all enjoy. If you do, for to drop a like. So if you're new to them, notice all the good stuff. And like always, try one to 500 likes. So I will go ahead and show the process of how to actually create the build toward the end of the video. We'll keep it pretty short when it comes to how we're like detailing the actual build itself because we all know what a six foot nine glitch metric looks like at this point as far as the ratings go. It's to get around 90 perimeter defense. This one has a little bit higher on the weight just for more rebounding and stuff like that. But it gets pretty much 90 perimeter D, 90 steel. You get 91 plus on the D board, which gives you gold rebound chaser. You get all the really good stuff. Versatile defender. You can do anything you want, whether it's guard ball, play backside with it. You can even play corner with it to be honest with you on d so anyway six foot nine 194 on the weight seven foot seven wingspan defined body shape we're gonna go ahead and do this because i'm noticing built has the smaller like wingspan visibly i don't think it's that big a deal but it's definitely worth at least thinking about if you are gonna make a build like that so anyway back into our unedited build right here we have the defined body shape and it's gonna be pretty standard as far as the ratings look like 92 driving dunk 80 driving layup we have 77 three-pointer 80 mid-range for the hall of fame sniper and then we it's pretty standard i mean 75 ball handle for decent dribble animations you got 70 speed with ball for the decent dribble styles you have solid interior defense i don't know if you really need need this to be honest with you at this point you're kind of committed to having to play for jumps but at the same time if you jump for the block aka you're you're jumping to still get a contest because that's the only way you can against seven foot threes at the end of the day jumping to get a block doesn't always just get you a block sometimes it gives you a good jump that you get a good shot contest on as far as interior d goes so I don't think you should let this go all the way down. I think 70 is a really good threshold to hit. If you want to go a little bit higher and go for the 76 interior defense, all you have to do is lose one speed and you will be able to get that for silver brick wall. If you wanted to maybe play in the park with this at the three a little bit more. But again, we're only here to talk about Pro-Am. So with, on that note, I mean, you got 95 block, Hall of Fame Intimidator. It's exactly what you get. I mean, it's right there. And then again, 90 steel rating for the Hall of Fame Interceptor. You got Hall of Fame Hustler, gold ankle braces. Again, I mean, this is the perfect build when it comes to playing backside defense as far as the ratings and badges go. Now, if it doesn't fit your preference and you do want to maybe play with a bigger build or a smaller build for that matter, like we're starting to run a six foot seven on the wing and we got two five tens guarded ball. I mean, <laughs> it, it's not ordinary but whatever fits your team style that's what it's all up to but again a lot of people like to play by the meta and it's what just makes the most sense because they can watch other people play with it and adjust and adapt based on how their team can use it so then for the physicals again we have 79 speed 75 acceleration is good enough at this point it's only for having the ball in your hands and it's literally as simple as that doesn't matter for off ball offense doesn't matter for defense or anything like that so it's pretty standard. You can just go ahead and put this at a decent level. It all depends on how much you want to actually handle the ball, or we call it like drags where you maybe catch it on the wing or the corner or something like that and do something with it. So it's totally up to you. Also, you are going to debatably maybe be the fast break guy, the third tertiary fast break guy when you are on a build like this, because it's going to be your two biggest guys crashing for the rebounds. Again, it all depends on what your team's kind of situation is. If you have a really good 7-3 who's coming out the corner and getting a lot of rebounds too, again, you still can maybe play for fast breaks every now and then. It all depends on what your team is. But anyway, we would like to keep 85 vertical on this. You want at least, I think, 80 for contact dunks of all styles. And at this point, I think 85 is just a nice, comfortable aspect to go for. 99 stamina. And then the strength doesn't really hurt anything. I mean, it's not going to help you a whole lot, but I think it's more for perimeter actually versus like trying to stop back downs. I mean, you're going to get back down regardless with the build like this. You're too low on the weight. Your strength is just too low. You don't really have brick wall at the highest level. I think this is more like important to have for when you end up on ball. And I think strength is really good in terms of playing on ball defense. Anyway, for takeover options on this build, you have slash, lock, rim, and glass. It's really as simple as that. I think running double lock or lock rim is a nice little move on this. I would love to test this out sometime and actually see if you could run paint intimidation on a build that doesn't have super high interior defense and still get really good contests when you're down low playing hands up. I don't know if you really could. 
I think that's something really solid though. If you wanted to run stuff blocks as your secondary, however, and start actually playing for chase down blocks, maybe you're playing really high hedge and you give up a free slip to the big, yet you want to try and get back for the chase down block. I think stuff blocks could play a pretty, pretty big factor in that. Other than that though, like I said, I don't think slash is really worth running. I think it's more so just running double lock take and Maybe you could run perimeter badge drop. I mean, honestly, all you have to do is get near the person. So if you're trying to affect a point guard, even if you're only in hedge, you can still affect his badges by kind of stepping to him. And again, I mean, it goes a long way. Blinders, Deadeye, Mismatch Expert, like Stop and Pop, Hot Zone Hunter, they all get dropped as you're in his face. So it definitely would help you from stopping getting jump shot contests in your face. And at that point, that's kind of what you want in his jump shot contest to do anyway. So I think perimeter badge drop could be a pretty good move. I don't think you really want extreme clamps on a backside defender. It's definitely more of a lockdown, like on ball badge, 100% or takeover, I should say. But anyway, let's talk badge counts real quick, what you're going to want to run on this. And then we'll go ahead and showcase how to actually create the build. So with this, you definitely want, I would say, like gold, limitless takeoff, Hall of Fame slithery finisher, and gold posterizer. If you want to put a couple extra finishing badges on your build, you could do that. But as you can see, if you add them all up, it's going to cost you four for gold, limitless takeoff, five for gold posterizer, and then it's going to cost you six for Hall of Fame slithery finisher. So all that included is going to total up to 15. You only have 14 on this. If you want to add one extra badge for that, it's up to you. If you want to drop the badge like for Slithery Finisher and just drop it to gold and run one extra finishing badge, whether that be maybe Bronze Lob City Finisher, Bronze Fearless Finisher, stuff like that, Unstrippable, totally up to you. I think any of that could be a solid move. At the end of the day, you're not going to be dunking a whole lot, but with 92 driving dunk and the ability to get gold posterized, you could definitely do your thing with this. I mean, that dunk meter is very doable. And if it's not a 7-3 center sitting in the paint, let's say you end up with the hedge guy where maybe you catch the ball in the corner and then you drive or something like that and the hedge guy is the one that's sitting down there some of them people they don't really care about the interior defense they're talking about like doing this right here with their hedge guy and that's a bad move if you ask me it's really stupid i mean you really just at the mercy of the dunk meter bro 24 7 but anyway as far as the shooting badges go i think this is pretty self-explanatory if you're a corner shooter you know what to look for at this point Silver catch and shoot, silver corner specialist. Don't run any lucky seven unless you're planning to be on the break a lot. If you are, maybe bronze. You got hot zone hunter on silver, hall of fame sniper, blinders on silver, dead eye on silver. Maybe some clutch shooter on like bronze or silver as well. Whatever fits into your budget at that point. Other than that though, I don't think anything else is really that necessary. I mean, you can maybe make a case for like bronze green machine. Don't think you should go to silver with the way the badge budgeting is right here with it costing three. But anyway, I think that stuff is pretty self-explanatory. When it comes to the playmaking badges, this is totally up to your style. If you want to be the guy who doesn't really do very much with the ball in his hands, if you catch it in the corner or something like that, you could probably put a majority of your badges into glue hands just to get good catches when it comes to corner shooting, fast break threes, stuff like that. If you wanted to, I think a good thing to do would maybe be to go sort of on budget mode when it comes to playmaking badges. So let's say run bronze handles for days, maybe bronze unpluckable. You can make the make the debate or the case for silver. I think that's one of the most reasonable badges to still run on silver. Same with quick first step. I think you definitely want this on silver as well. So long story short, you got these two on silver then you got handles for days on bronze, bronze bailout, maybe bronze break starter as well, silver bullet passer, and then whatever you can afford with glue hands fit in there. I don't think you need things like tight handles, triple thread juke post playmaker, dimer, floor general, downhill. I mean, none of that stuff is really super important here. So we already talked on the ones that are pretty important. If you want to go ahead and just put the rest of whatever you have left over into glue hands, I think that's a perfect move. The only one sleeper badge to maybe run that I didn't talk about is probably bronze needle threader. I think you could make a case for that, but either way, moving along to the defense. Now this is where things get kind of tight and I would highly recommend to put a lot of your extra badges that you get for your build into your defense. Now, it's going to be a luxury for those who actually have grinded. So I'll just put it like that. Like at this point, we're in season six right now of 2K22 next gen. You get four extra badges at the beginning of the game just for doing the college stuff too. So at this point, you could really get 10 extra badges when it comes to your builds. So this build right here could have 44. Chances are you're probably someone who only got like three seasons of legend or level 40, I should say, or maybe four seasons. So I'm just going to assume that you guys could end up with like 40 defensive badges, something like that. I think that's a nice little ballpark. Makes a lot of sense. So let's just keep it simple. I think definitely gold box, at least you could maybe make the case for hall of fame, but gold is probably the most reasonable thing to run. You definitely want hall of fame interceptor. That's your biggest role, biggest job on this team. You're going to want gold rebound chaser as well i would think i mean you're still gonna have to be involved with the rebounding because you're guarding the centers so if they send him down and you're stuck on him you still have to play for the box you still have to play for a box out on him you still have to go up for the rebound you still have to just be a body to help your 7-3 get the board so i think you definitely want to plan to crash the rebounds again it all depends on your team scheme though if you have two bigs and you're the third biggest guy you're probably not always crashing but 
Anyway, moving along, gold rim protector, that's just obvious. You could run at least bronze or silver menace just for double teams and trappers and stuff like that if you guys run man or anything like that. I'm gonna let you guys know this, all right? I have just become a believer of what people been telling me all year. I was actually gonna make a video on this too, but I never did. I was gonna say the badge that my subscribers have been telling me to run <laughs> for like five months and I never have. I have been running chase down artists super high on every hedge build or every corner build that I've been playing with, or even lock for that matter, all year, because I refuse to believe that bronze works as good as Hall of Fame. But after running bronze, it's the truth, man. It really is crazy. I will tell you guys 100%. I recommend only run bronze if that's what you have to do. If you can't fit in the bad, like the badge budgeting across the whole rest of your build, because you want things like maybe pogo stick on gold or some ankle braces on at least silver or gold as well. You want maybe ball stripper to help you defend seven threes and stuff like that as well. Maybe you want bronze brick wall. Probably not. But anyway, all this stuff gets a little bit hard to budget sometimes. I mean, literally just to run Hall of Fame hustler, interceptor, and in intimidator together is literally like 17 badges alone that's already half of what you have <laughs> like right here so just keep in mind like i said it's very hard to budget this stuff but if you do add those extra defensive badges i think you can afford to run stuff like maybe chase down on i would say gold is a pretty good budget i mean as you can see it only costs you three to run on gold whereas i think going hall of fame is a little bit overkill going to that five right there for what it costs so just keep all that in mind now, some people are believers in off-ball pests when it comes to helping you play hedge defense and trying to, like, bump the, the big man as he slips to the hoop. It might be valid, low-key. I'm not going to be the one to come out here and tell you guys to run it because I've never done it myself in playing hedge defense. But if you want to go ahead and try that, that's up to you as well. All right, so now for the explanation on how to actually create the build and set it up in the My Player Builder. Now, I've done this so many times, I can just do it by muscle memory. I don't have to read off a script or anything like that. So you're going to go to Shooting Guard, pick whatever handness and number you want. It doesn't matter. Go down to six foot three, 220 on the weight, seven foot on the wingspan, and burly body shape. It's hilarious how many times I've done this this year. <laughs> it's not even funny. It's just such muscle memory at this point. So anyway, you're gonna go ahead and just upgrade every every single thing you want. It doesn't matter what you upgrade. It can all just be random. And then all you gotta do after that is just pick whatever takeovers. You can literally just spam A at this point of the like part right here. And then once this screen pops up, you're gonna go ahead and scroll all the way over to edit build. Don't hit start my career. Don't hit test builder. Hit edit build all the way on the right right here. So now once you've done that, you've set up the little, I would say the setup part of this. So just keep in mind, number four right here, the big burly chunky six foot three that we have. <laughs> and now we're gonna go out to the menu, go to the features tab, go to settings. Now scroll all the way down right here to the point where it says unit of measurement. You're gonna switch this to metric system. It's literally as simple as this. It's very, very easy. If you have done this process so many times, maybe it's easier for someone like me because it does get kind of complicated sometimes. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and find the chunky six foot three real quick, as you can see right here, 1.91 and then 100 kg as well. So we're gonna hit Y on that. Go ahead and just say yes on the edit rebirth and then boom, come down here, confirm, move your like D-pad stick, whatever you wanna do over to the right. You're gonna edit the height and now you're gonna move it over to 2.05. So now you're gonna come down to the weight, go ahead and just put that on minimum put the wingspan on max. Now this is how you set up the one that gets 90 printer defense. If you wanna set it up the way that I did it right here, you're gonna go ahead and just max it out all the way until you lose the speed. So it's 88 kg right there, as you can see. 89 perimeter D, but you do gain more strength, you gain more rebounding, you gain more of all everything like that. And as you can see, it goes a long way for interior defense, rebounding, strength, all types of stuff like that. And I don't really plan to max out the vertical regardless. I don't really plan to max out. I guess perimeter D would be nice to have a 90. So it's up to you. Whether you wanna go 85 kg or 88 kg, doesn't really matter. But anyway, that's how you set up the power forward six foot nine metric right there. It's technically a shooting guard, I know, but people play it at the four. I mean, literally all you have to do to make it work properly is have two point guards. It'll be your PG at the one and another point guard at the two, probably like a six foot three or something like that. That is classified as a point guard build. And then your three, AKA your lockdown will probably be six foot seven as a shooting guard or something like that as well. Or maybe he made a point guard as well. So long story short, as long as you don't have people who made like small forwards or something like that, and then they're gonna be lined up at the four, you're all good. But even if he is lined up at the four, it's actually kind of glitchy. I'm gonna tell you guys this much. I played against Joe and his team recently in the Hall of Fame League, like probably weeks ago or something like that. And his team had him as the lockdown lined up at the four and the hedge guy lined up at the two. It was really, really weird. I was the power forward setting screens. So I couldn't set screens on Joe because he was my matchup. It was like the weirdest thing. And I can relate to that all the way back to stage in 2K20. I'm sure some of you guys remember that stupid, that stupid thing in the game where I couldn't screen my own matchup just because the game thinks that it's my guy. So it's long story short, it's okay if you end up out of position or something like that. Your team can figure it out and it might even be for the better. But 
anyway that was just a little bit of backstory right there i hope you all enjoyed the video if you did for to drop a like stuff if you're new to them noties uh good stuff and like always tries one to 500 likes minutes to the end of the video put power forward or put two point nah just put two in the comments <laughs> i don't think anybody wants to put 2.05 or anything like that so power forward or two but anyway that concludes the series for all the meta builds for comp pro and nba 2k22 next gen we did point guard shooting guard small forward center and now we just did power forward right here so i hope you all enjoyed and We'll go ahead and just get back into the pro -Am content very soon. It's just the, the the Hall of Fame season ended, so I'm planning to just kind of take a little bit of a break when it comes to pro -Am gameplays. But we do have one coming tomorrow as well that's really fire. So just keep that in mind. But anyway, like I said, that's off video. Appreciate y'all supporting and just rocking with me this year. It's been amazing support. I cannot be happier with how we've been doing things this year. And it's been 220 days in a row of me uploading daily on 2K22 Next Gen. So we've come a long way with this stuff. I'm glad that we're still doing it consistently. And I do appreciate you guys' support, like I said, 100%. So anyway, soft video. Hope you all enjoyed. And then that, take it easy, man. Peace.